Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox, you're watching Show of the Week, I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. This week I got to drive a real car with a video game controller. An awesome once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that I took very seriously. Okay, all good. What I suggest is try and get in a steady lap, so roll yep. just nail it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so if you do that again, we'll be stopping you. Wow. Hey, if they'd done even the most basic research into how I play video games, they never would have invited me in the first place. True, that's on them. Still though, you could have killed someone. Yeah, but only like in every video game ever. Okay, one, just because you were using a video game controller doesn't mean that was a video game. And two, you don't kill people in all video games. All right, what video game were we talking about this week? Well? Your legend, assassin, is spreading. All right, well, it's Assassin's Creed Origins, so yes, you do kill people in it, I expect. Yes. But I mean, you know more about it than I do, because you've been playing it. I have, you? I so... have, yeah. Only the first hour or so. Okay, but, good. Um... So not, not spoilers deep into the game here, we're just going to be talking about the first hour. No spoilers. But uh, what are your impressions so far? Um, It's different, I think, uh, if you Why watch... Why do you say it's different with that face? Um, is that a good different or a bad difference? Because it is different. It depends who you are, really. It depends what you like. So uh, for many, many years, uh, Assassin's Creed has done amazing sort of cities and worlds and things like that. Mm -hmm. And everyone's gone, ooh, imagine if they turned it into an RPG. That'd be amazing. Who um, said that? I don't remember anyone saying that. I said that a okay. few times. Probably you just weren't listening. Right. Um, well, if you went ooh before you said it, I'd probably you probably just stopped out. listening yeah. <laughs> at that point. Because you assumed it was going to be something to do with cars. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's usually a fair bet. Uh, so uh, they have turned it into an RPG, but not the kind of branching narrative, you know, conversation options. Yeah. like romancing kind of RPG. Right. They've turned it into the kind where like numbers come out of people's heads. Yeah. And if you're not a particular level, you'll get absolutely smashed by all the baddies. Which is the type of RPG I'm less fond of, right. but I understand some people will like it. Like bear in mind, I didn't really like Borderlands because that was like numbers coming out of people's heads and arbitrary amounts of damage from guns. But this is a game where you can shoot someone in the head with a bow and arrow and they won't die because you're a lower level right. than that guy. Okay, and I was a bit like, saying. Uh... I appeal you. And the, mm, the bit that really, really annoyed me was that if the person's too high a level and you do your Assassin's Creed death from above yeah, thing, the... The yeah. air assassination. But you don't have the wrist blade yet, so you just okay, sort of smash just... their head against the concrete. Right. But if they're a higher level than you, it, it ceases to be like a takedown and becomes just a stealth attack. What makes you think you'd survive this? So it's very, very different. I understand some people will, will enjoy the increased progression and the sense of like leveling up and stuff, but you get into the first area and like it gives you your, your first assassination target, but he's like a super high level guy. And if you try and go in, you get absolutely murdered. Mm. I mean, I probably, if I give it a bit more time, but it's got that same thing I had with The Division where the first thing I tried to do was shoot a guy in the head and he just sort of, he was in a beanie and he shrugged off the bullet to the, the head. The number, just... six, the number six fell out yeah, of his head. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. He went, oh. Yeah. Put it back in. Exactly. So it's got very much that kind of thing. But other than that, right, which is definitely a personal preference thing rather than a necessarily a criticism that will apply mm -hmm. to everyone. Uh, it looks amazing. The setting's incredible. Like, it's so colourful. I think that's the thing. Like, you sort of imagine that all of Assassin's Creed in Egypt is going to be kind of deserty and browns and, and stuff like that. But everything's vividly painted. You know, all the temples mm, look incredible. Yeah. All that stuff's really, really cool. It's a very, very good looking game. Uh, characters seem interesting. Again, it's not really a time period that's been handled with games, which is kind of Assassin's Creed's MO, MO these days. Come. It has been a long road. You need rest? Ah, uh, no. No rest. Not until all the masked ones' guts lie baking in the sun. That's awesome to, to kind of explore that thing, and obviously the historical tour thing will appeal to you oh, as well. Yeah, is that at launch or is that coming later? Apparently it's April 2018, okay. according to our in-house Assassin's oh, that's Creed a shame. I was hoping that would be in there at um, 
with the start. Well, yeah. you sort of don't want to. Uh, I guess you want to play the game, the game properly, first, and then you yeah. want to explore all the the areas and stuff. So I don't think it's too. It would too be bad. cheating to go and learn all the history of the final boss. Yes, yeah. like, and then he was stabbed in. the <laughs> He's allergic ear. to peanuts. Yeah. And you just feed a peanut into exactly. his mouth. Exactly. Yeah, famously allergic to peanuts. So how does it start? Is it you in the modern day again? Are they doing the modern day thing? Well, no. They're not. But okay. you are still in the animus. <sighs> okay, they, it you have like, like an animus pulse thing that you can do that kind of reveals your objectives and stuff. So do you have an, is there another character you play as? Not that I've seen so far, and I would have thought they'd probably have introduced it at the beginning if that was the case. It's just, it seems so weird that they're clinging on to the animus thing when they've sort of been taking it out of the game as yeah. much as they could in previous ones. Yeah, I, d I think they just don't know what to do with it. They kind of ended that story, they basically dropped the mic in Assassin's Creed 3, and mm. then in Black Flag they were like, Maybe you work in an office oh, that was in the worst person? That was the worst thing about Black Flag, which is such a great game, was yeah. that it would occasionally stop you being a pirate and make you go and walk around in an office job. <laughs> in Canada. And it was like, come up to my office for a meeting. And you're like, but I'm a pirate. And they're like, no, you have to come to this HR meeting. I, yeah, I figure most people play video games to escape an office job. You know, they get home after the office job and they don't want to be in an office. Yeah. They want to be a pirate. So I go and hack some computers. And I'm like, can I not hack some pirates with this? To death. Cutlass. With this cutlass, yes. Like, no. Oh, look who's here. So you didn't forget, after all, you're just incredibly rude. And made poor Rebecca here wait for nearly 30 minutes. Okay, so what else has happened in the first hour that you've been playing? Uh, uh, I saved a kid from some hyenas. That was So when I discovered that I was too low level a scrub to beat the first guy. But you can beat hyenas. Yeah, I can, well, yeah, I can, I can beat hyenas. I'm, that's within my, my range as an assassin. Okay. I can kind of understand it. I'm kind of learning to be an assassin, right? And I'm going to found the order and stuff. Uh, and I'm friends with an eagle and all that stuff. But, um, you know, fundamentally, I'm doing kind of scrub work at the moment so I can Just get your level up. build myself up so I can duff that guy up in his fancy fortress. So yeah, it, my, my first hour has been spent kind of getting to grips with the stuff, but you're not really an assassin at the start, which kind of justifies the progression thing. So you're just a guy going around punching hyenas? Yeah, I don't have a wrist blade. I, yeah, I'm just a guy death from above hyenas, basically. Yeah. And he's like, man, one day these will be the Pope. Yeah. Or whoever. <laughs> the and Pope or one of his many clones. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Go on. Could I be a matcha like you one day? Well, you can start by looking out for your brother and not taking him to dangerous places. Oh, and the other cool thing, <laughs> there's a little, I don't know if it was in, intended to be like a moment, but uh, there's a bit where you escape the first temple and you call for your mount. And I'm like, I'm going to be riding across the desert on a cool horse. And then I like whistle for my mount and a camel turns up. Oh, uh, okay. And then I just spent a good 20 minutes running people over with my camel. That's cool. Which I don't, excellent. I don't recall ever riding a camel in the game before. Don't think so. That's so pretty good. You played the first hour. Yeah. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. <laughs> so I a mean, third of your total experience. I hope you weren't expecting some kind of critical appraisal of this, Luke. <laughs> um, How's the camel handle? Pretty, pretty good, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's got a Yeah, it's got a wide turning circle, but it's, it's nippy. Anyway, you can ride a camel around. So you've got a camel friend, and you've got an, an eagle, eagle friend. friend. Oh, wow. Uh, Senu, who yeah. does basically what the, the bird did in Far Cry Primal. Flies yeah. over, tags enemies and stuff. Can it fly down and... Oh, it can, can't it? It can bother people. Go and menace people. You just like harass, and then they're just like, ah, it's a <laughs> eagle! And then you run in and like boot them off a wall. And then they don't fall off the wall because they're a level five character and you're a lowly level three yeah, scrub. Your foot just goes through them and then yeah. you fall off the wall. <laughs> exactly. Oh, um, too low level. Silence when I work! Of course, my lord. Beg pardon, my lord. So you're going to stick with it even though it's an RPG now? Yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm definitely uh, still interested to explore that world and those characters. So um, I will endure the numbers coming out of people's heads for a bit longer uh, and see how we get on. There might even be an option to turn them off. Sometimes games have that. There probably is like a HUD option, but I'll know that there are You'll invisible numbers coming out. All up. games have invisible numbers coming out of people Not all when games. you shoot them. Yes, I mean, that's literally how they calculate damage in video games. No, normally they calculate where if like a bullet goes in someone's head, then they're definitely yeah, dead. Yeah, so it does like a thousand damage because it's got in the <laughs> head. So a thousand would come out. But it doesn't, because no. they've turned it off. Don't ruin games You're for me. You're a fool Andy. to yourself, channel. Don't ruin all You're games for me. Lying to yourself. <laughs> hey, where's Jane? I think she's still off petting cats in Assassin's Creed Origins. Still? I know. Man, I never got why ancient Egyptians worshipped cats. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like cats, but they just lie around all day not doing anything. Yeah, they're excellent. Well, yeah, but I feel like cats need to step their game up if they want to be worshipped these days. 
In this modern age of swagways and freak shakes, cats are going to have to work harder to get the same attention they got back in the good old days of ancient Egypt. What's that, cats? You keep our grain stores free of rats? This milkshake contains twice my daily recommended calorie intake. Have fun with the grain. Lucky for them, though, there are plenty of excellent cats in video games that deserve fanatical devotion way more than the regular old felines that Bayek can't stop smoothing. Consider these video game cats who should be getting some worship. When you're dealing with the many, many horrors of the Evil Within series, one of the most comforting sights you can see is Save Cat, this gorgeous black kitty with a smart red bow who first appeared in the game's Assignment DLC. We were already going to be happy to see Save Cat on account of how it isn't a shuddering nightmare creature who wants to murder us, but Save Cat also lets you save your game, hence the name that we gave it. Save Cat shows up again in the sequel, The Evil Within 2, only now it's hanging around in your safe room guarding your slide projector and doling out free green gel whenever you look at a new slide. That's worth a statue at the very least, come on. Thanks, Kitty. What the hell? Sorry to disappoint you boys. It's just little old me. Although she isn't technically a fully-fledged feline, are you going to tell Selina Kyle from the Batman Arkham series that she can't be on this list? Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh. Catwoman was an integral part of our Batman adventures from Arkham City onwards, capable of collecting the pink Riddler trophies that Batman couldn't pick up, presumably because they clashed with his outfit, as well as saving his life when he found himself inconveniently buried under a pile of rubble. Screw him. Or, I don't know, maybe not doing that. Hey, cats are fickle. Best of all, she shares our love of ruining and humiliating the Riddler. Please, please. Do you want me to beg? I can beg. beg. Mercy. Mercy. Please. You're all right, Catwoman. I'll back you up. So fight like your life depends on it. Go for it. One of the best characters in bonkers Japanese RPG Persona 5 is Morgana, who is a cat. I am not a cat. Say that again and I'll make you regret it. Okay, who is not a cat? But definitely is actually a cat. Anyway, Morgana is surprisingly badass for a not cat, saving your bacon on more than one occasion. Come! Ah! As if that wasn't enough, Morgana can also transform into a bus. Morgana! That's right, ancient Egyptians. Starting to feel pretty silly about worshipping those cats who can't turn into a bus, I expect. <coughs> Speaking of cats with awesome powers, Dusty, the cat from Gravity Rush, has a definite advantage over other cats in that it's able to grant you supernatural law of nature defying gravity abilities. Or at least, I think it was Dusty. He's not very forthcoming. Regardless, Dusty combines world-changing cosmic power with the quality of also being super cute, which is pretty good for a weird pulsating cat made of galaxies. If you're going to worship cats, go for the ones with almighty cosmic powers, is my motto. Is this your kitten? Uh-uh. But this kitty, see? She's all alone. All alone? Yep. Series protagonist Ryo Hazuki isn't the only one in Shenmue with dead parents. This kitten he stumbles across in the first game is in the same boat. In fact, Ryo and this kitten have even more than that in common, with their parents dying on the same day and by the same killer, Lan Di, who killed Ryo's father and ran over the kitten's mother while he was making his escape. You and I have a lot in common. Our parents died on the same day. Seems the kitten dealt with it rather better than Ryo, however, by deciding to just chill out in a box instead of going on a long and involved quest for revenge that involved hours of book carrying and tree punching. Nice one, kitty. But given the amount of time it's taking us to catch up to Lan Di, don't be surprised if we finally track him down in Shenmue 3 and this kitten's already taken care of him. You snooze, you lose, Ryo. Now it's time to see what's written in the comments, and more urgently, the instructions written on this scroll for killing the ancient Egyptian mummy that's been rampaging around the studio since just now when I started badmouthing cats. 
uh, it's all in hieroglyphics. Man, I wish we could go one week without being menaced by supernatural terrors. Ha! <laughs> Keep dreaming. <laughs> well, while we've still got time, let's have a look at the comments on this video in which we return to Hitman to kill off Rocco, Sapienza's most pantsless man. The Actual contract point. is to, to kill him with a falling yes, object. There it's are up some... pretty high, so yeah. what's going to fall on him from up, yeah. from up there? Several commenters were pleased to see a contract out on Rocco, such as commented Jess Boyle, who says, I've been waiting for a hit to come out on this guy. Finally time to be paid for an assassination we've all been doing for free. Yeah, but when you enjoy assassinating Rocco as much as we do, it hardly feels like work. This, man, all this here is just temporary. Hey! The unusual conditions of the Rocco contract got some of our more devious commenters thinking, such as Tomcat Gaming, who says, Where can I find a falling object? Sets body at bottom of stairwell, jumps on top of body. Agent 47 is the falling object. Ingenious. Yeah, I'd like to see Diana argue against that one. It's certainly more elegant than our solution, which was summed up nicely by Word Sarian, who says, I'm just imagining the forensic team coming in later and realizing that Rocco was dragged all the way there before the display was dropped on him, and trying to figure out what in the world possessed the killer to drag him unconscious across the city streets, instead of just shooting him in his apartment. Looks like we got a real sicko here, Chief. How could he have dropped the model of the solar system on him without anyone seeing? I guess he'd have to... plan it. <laughs> the eagle is in the nest. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Looks good to me. And there's Rocco. Yeah, lined Play up Doctor nicely. in the background. I like it. And Lovely composition. Just gonna... Contract. this over. Contract. Build. Yes. yes! Moving on, here are the comments on this video in which we play Shadow of War and delve deep into our extensive shared knowledge of Tolkien lore. He's such a Boromir. <laughs> just give it, I want to use it for good though, this evil yeah. uh, artifact. Just give me, give me it. I'll just yeah. do one, I'll just do one look. Just one really it. quick look. Really quick. I'll only use one eye. Yeah. If, I go, <laughs> if I go instantly mad, I'll know not to use it again. Commenter Brandon Michael Heimbach is suitably impressed, saying, I love how you guys always toe the line between knowledgeable and lovably unaware. You're like pop culture kittens. Hey, I am fully up on my Silmarillion, I'll have you know. Mike, that's a novelty cash-in parody book called The Cellar Million. I don't think it's entirely accurate. Next, you'll be telling me the one shoe isn't canon. Why is everyone going so crazy over rings then, if everyone's got them? Because the one ring is the most powerful one. It controls all the other rings, Mike. Don't you even know that it's yet? It's the master no, ring. I do. It's like how, you know that there's one pair of shoes that controls all other shoes? What? <laughs> yeah, right? The, the master one, shoes. The one shoe. Genghis John, meanwhile, is more concerned with our pronunciation, saying, Man, the way they keep murdering the name Celebrimbor. Mm. I feel really sorry for all the Celebrimbors watching this video. First, they can only find Celebrimbort novelty license plates, now this. And here's comment to some guy to let us know how it feels, saying, Honestly, as a Celebrim boar, I have to say that the only thing worse than people butchering my name is never finding it on a named Coca-Cola. Hmm. Got Chris? Close enough? Poor Celebrim boar. I assume it's a British school kid thing to like even collect conkers and put yeah. them on strings and stuff. Probably. And they're like, what did you kids do? Well, we did do? that whole video where we played conkers in... <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they know um, what conkers with are. Carlos, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. at the very least, go watch that and then you'll understand. Yeah. Come on, car conkers. Conker. And I think we've provided an invaluable public service, as commenter Tasker Thorne says. I understand now. Conkers is a British children's game where they steal helicopters and try to crash into each other. That's exactly right. Yeah, we used to get through 30 to 40 helicopters every autumn. Fond memories of dodging flaming wreckage in the park. Good times. Oh! Yes! Excellent oh. Amazing! Uh-oh. Was uh -oh. that flames? Oh, no. yes. You took out one of his rotors. He's going down. It's totally... I've, I've got spin. this. Finally this week, your comments on last week's show, which looked at WWE 2K18 and the spookiest wrestlers to dress up as for Halloween. Sting spent most of the early 90s as a fun-loving surfer type with a bleach blonde hairdo and colourful face paint. But at some point in 1996, he clearly watched The Crow, because he turned up the next night on WCW Nitro looking like this. Probably started a band as well. Comment at Boom Shakalaka straight in with this. Sting, set up a band? That'd be awful. Might have to get the police involved. Boo. Meanwhile, commenter George Sears asks, where the hell is wrong Jeremy? Oh God, it's right behind me, isn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. When you can't see wrong Jeremy, he is absolutely behind you. Um, hearts unknown. Finally this week, commenter James Tanner seems to complain that chain loot boxes, $24.99 from Oxbox, only ever contain spiders. Well yeah, how else is she going to get rid of all those spiders? Why does she have so many spiders anyway? 
That's a good question. The important thing is that I'm going to head back to the studio. Are you coming? Uh, that depends. Does this ancient Egyptian mummy repellent you sold me work? Well, I don't see any mummies around here, Mike. So yeah, obviously it's working. There's one right there. Oh, shh. You're right. I'm just going to go. Hey, good luck for me. <laughs> That's it for Show of the Week, thanks for watching, but before you go, I'm making some headway in translating the hieroglyphics on this Assassin's Creed Origins artwork into English. Oh, nice. What have you got? Uh, well, this one here, this is a pictogram representing an expression of physical force. Okay, so like shove? Lighter, more sort of like, like press. Okay. Oh, and these two, mm -hmm. uh, when placed together, they convey a sense of approval and a kind of switch. So like maybe press the like button? I mean, broadly, in as much as we can convey these symbols into modern language. Fascinating. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. All right, lunch. Don't even worry about it, Andy. Lunch is going to come to us via remote control vehicle technology. Or we could get pizza. Pizza is good.